Hi, I'm Caleb Tennis, an engagement manager with SwiftStack. We provide a software-defined storage solution using OpenStack Swift. It allows you to deploy, manage, and maintain your Swift environments from small to big. Today I'm going to talk about five key advantages for using OpenStack Swift in your environment, be that storage by itself or be that in a full OpenStack environment. The first advantage of OpenStack Swift is scalability. Now, Swift was designed for scale in mind, and that means you can start with a very small amount of storage and grow it to a very large amount of storage. We've seen customers go from tens of petabytes to hundreds, or tens of terabytes to hundreds of terabytes to petabyte to multi-petabytes, all the way up to hundreds of petabytes if you need to, and it allows you to uh, design your capital needs around that. You can start with a few terabytes on day one and grow it quickly or slowly depending on what your needs are, and the operational model can change over time. So if hard drives change, for example, going from one terabyte drives to maybe in the future six terabyte drives, you can adjust your hardware needs. Similar as the design changes with the vendors that you've chosen of chassis, for example, if HP or Dell has comes out with a new model, you can refresh your capital expenditures with new years uh, as they come forth, and you can uh, buy the, the latest and greatest, drop that into your system without taking the old ones out. And uh, when you need to, remove, uh, remove the old ones, bring the new ones online, and continue to grow your storage cluster. So infinitely scalable, design with that in mind up front. Next major feature is what we call addressability. That is, everything in Swift is a URL. Swift is just a giant web server with a flat namespace. Everything is addressed with a URL. So different than a traditional file or SAN uh, block storage, object uses URLs. It's a different way of thinking about things. Very easy integration with HTTP apps, designed for the future uh, with mobile and leveraging HTTP. It's a great way to leverage uh, this type of storage system for the scalability and need that you have from storage. The nice thing, too, is that all data is on equal footing. Objects that are uploaded a long time ago have the same addressability and same storage aspects of objects that are introduced locally. So there's no uh, concept of data that gets put away, not seen again, and uh, need to go find it and may take a long time to bring back out of the system. Everything is on equal footing. And data is private, uh, but ACLs exist that allow you to operationally decide who in the system has access to other users' data, or it could be read-only, write-only, or publicly readable, uh, depending upon what the operational needs is. Again, that allows you a, a footing that you can use to um, distribute the data pretty widely and uh, uh, decide whatever you want from an operational perspective. Next is durability. Uh, Swift was designed with extreme durability in mind. Remember, this came from Rackspace, where uh, the operational challenges of handling drive failures at scale is pretty complex. And so the expectation is that drives are going to fail, and the system needs to be able to route around those failures. So Swift handles drive failures very gracefully uh, and will uh, alert you through the Swift Stack controller if uh, drive failures do happen and allow you to operationally decide what to do when those failures happen. Some operators can choose to batch drive failures and replace them on a schedule. So gone are the days of white glove treatment from large SAN vendors where somebody shows up the next day to replace a hard drive. Those types of models are very expensive. Why not let a lot of drives fail over time? The storage system can completely work around it. It's not a big deal. And then replace those drives on a fixed schedule when your needs dictate. Swift also uses the as unique as possible data placement algorithm uh, designed by the Swift developers. And what this means is as big as you grow your system, Swift will push that data as far apart as possible. So multi-data center strategies mean Swift will store copies of data in those multiple data centers. Within the same data center, Swift will at least try and spread the copies out across multiple machines, multiple racks, multiple rows, depending on where you delineate those failure domains. So a lot of flexibility in that design. Next is availability. Swift was designed from a web services model where people need access to their data. And uh, the proxy tier, which is what's leveraged to access that, can scale independently of the storage tier, which is the durability part that we've talked about. So as an extreme example, if an archiving scenario exists where lots and lots of data is going to go into the system, but only a small amount of concurrency exists, maybe one application is reading and writing that data, the availability in the proxy tier could be relatively small, maybe just a couple of machines, whereas the storage uh, nodes themselves may be hundreds or thousands of machines to handle all that data. Uh, conversely, if there's a small amount of data but a large concurrency need, perhaps downloading of video uh, assets, uh, streaming, a lot of different users accessing the system, the availability tier, the proxy tier, can scale much, much larger while the storage tier itself could be smaller. So it allows you to decide what makes the most sense from a storage system. 
because Swift keeps these, cop uh, these replicas in as unique as possible locations, uh, there is no concept of a master copy in Swift. There is no single point of failure where uh, data, even though it may be backed up, the, the backup is considered a second-class citizen. All of the copies of data within Swift are on equal access and can equally be read or written to uh, throughout the system, which gives multiple entry points into the system a very uh, easy way of having access to that data. And it's completely upgradable in place. Uh, you can upgrade Swift. With, there's been no backwards API compatibility broken since Swift has come out. Very easy to upgrade Swift. Uh, we actually provide a rolling upgrade feature within the Swift stack controller. We upgrade one node at a time and move on to the next one. It means there's no downtime to the system to handle these software upgrades. So uh, a little bit different in the software-defined storage space, but allows complete availability depending upon how the system's designed and obviously shooting for as many nines as we can go for. Last is affordability. A uh, key aspect that we see in most cases is customers are driving their operational and their CapEx costs down uh, because budgets are constrained. So with Swift and with this software-defined solution, we recommend commodity hardware. Let's get inexpensive white label uh, boxes and drives, desktop-style drives, as opposed to 1,500K SaaS drives, and let's save the cost there. We're going to expect those drives to fail, and we're going to handle those failures, but there's no need to put extra money into the hardware where we can save it. Uh, with that, we have this operational simplicity model, which also saves a lot on this money. Again, because somebody's not going to come the next day to replace those drives, uh, you don't have to pay for those overnight shipping expenses and the, and the person that shows up. That's all baked into the cost, so save there. And because it's open source and part of the OpenStack project, there's no proprietary lock-in. With SwiftStack, we provide the open source, uh, open, uh, open source Swift version uh, with a bunch of stuff around it that makes it easier to deploy. And uh, with that, uh, all the sources available and very easy to see what goes on behind the scenes of your storage system. It's not a black box approach. So that was the five key aspects of uh, OpenStack Swift and, and what you should be looking for, and appreciate you watching. <laughs>